we're going to go for number 15. This is John, pronouns he, him, calling him from Dallas. Uh, wants to ask, why are we atheists and not agnostic? Is that a good summary of, of what you're calling for, John? Or is there anything else you want to add there context-wise? That's basically it. Radical. Well, you're okay. on the line, man. So, so tell me, uh, do you want us to just jump right in or do you want to, do you want to, you know, expound on it at all? Or do you just want us to just start talking? Uh, am I on the line? You, you are, are on, on the line, line bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just want more cause I'm, um, uh, I don't have a great voice. Um, I'm sorry. Just my throat's a little bit sore, but cause I, I don't want to have any audio issues. Uh, no, I mean, I just, that's my question. Do you want to expound on that? It, you can, you if you want, or I can just start tearing into it because the, the, the honest answer simply yeah, is that, uh, it. the, yeah, these are colloquial terms. Um, the, you can get into the actual definition of these things. Atheist is the position of not believing in a God. Gnosticism is about knowledge. And so well, no. to say you can, you can be an agnostic theist, I believe there's a God, but I don't know. You can be a Gnostic theist. I know there is a God, and I believe in that. You can be a Gnostic atheist and say, I know there is no God. Or you can be an agnostic atheist. I don't believe in a God. I'm not sure. I don't have a... And like, so generally speaking, these terms are used differently in a colloquial sense. And people say agnostic is the position of, I don't, you know, kind of up in the air. I'm waiting to be convinced. And atheist means definitely there's no such thing as a God. I can tell you that's not the definition, but it doesn't matter because people are going to use it differently. There's also some people who differentiate and they say hard versus soft atheism and all these different things. Um, these are all just colloquialisms for the same thing. Long story yeah. short, I, the, like the position that we certainly would be taking is agnostic atheism, which is, I don't believe there's a God. If you prove to me there is, I'll change my mind. But the example that I usually give is that, you know, if I tell you there's an elephant behind this bookshelf, you can either say, yes, there is, no, there isn't, or I don't believe you. If you say, yes, there is, or no, there isn't, you need evidence for that. But if you just say, I don't believe you, you're waiting on me to give you evidence. You're not making yeah. a true statement. You're waiting for me to back up my claims. And that's how we feel about God. We have no okay, reason to believe in it. And I, somebody else to tell, you know? diff and I differ from Forrest. So I differ from Forrest in just oh, the, the slight way that I am a thorn in, the, thorn in the side of people who want to call and be pedantic about these definitions, because I am an atheist in the sense that you, most people are referring to in the philosophical literature when they engage mm -hmm. in these sort of arguments in order to go into pedantry about the definition of atheism. I am that definition of atheism. I do not think any God as has been defined is possible. I think most of most, if not all of the God definitions that I have been presented with are inconsistent internally, nonsense, imp improbable or impossible. And thus I reject them all. And unless and until I can be presented with one that does make sense, I don't think it's possible. I think it is impossible. I, I do, I actively do not believe it is possible for a God to exist. Nice. I like okay, that too. So Does that answer your question, John? Yeah. Um, but now so can I expand on, um, a tier comment. By all means, by all means. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I think everyone is agnostic, right? So nobody knows. I think nobody would, uh, I mean, they can say that they genuinely believe, but they don't know. So in terms of everyone is to some degree agnostic, it's just to what degree is your conviction, but that doesn't say anything about reality because you can't know. Um, so, I mean, I think everyone is an agnostic theist or agnostic atheist at heart. Um, and, that, and how strong their conviction is, is just kind of subjective to, in their personal mind, but it, it doesn't say anything about reality. So, um, the reason why, um, I'm an agnostic theist is because, um, to an extent you're not talking about a hypothesis when it comes to the origin of the universe that you can really say definitively, like it's a kind of a zero sum. So either the universe came out of natural forces or out of secular scientific explanations, out of physics, out of whatever, uh, or it came out of God, and these are mutually exclusive. So it's a zero-sum hypothesis, meaning you have to choose a, a, uh, theism or atheism. You have to choose either secular or scientific um, 
perspective that it came from physics, which we haven't demonstrated, sure. and, or we have to prove it happened because God, and you haven't demonstrated. So at the end of the day, no one can really prove their side. It's just um, kind of a zero something where everyone says you, no one can really have more or bet or more good or less good evidence. It's all to varying degrees subjective because it's uh, unfalsifiable. It's like I, that. Well, okay, I so think I'm, that you would have to there, there, go ahead. We're going to probably say different things. You go though. <laughs> I, I was going to say there's there's a few things there that I disagree with, but like I think that most of them are not really okay. worth talking about. So like the the main thing that I would be interested in in digging into is um, number one, I'm interested in why you're a theist. Then if 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 you think that there's you know it's all just kind of subjective, it's all kind mm -hmm. of up in the air. Wouldn't you then lean towards the null hypothesis and say I don't have sufficient evidence to say this thing is true? So until I have what I could actually call evidence and not just a kind of general assumption, then I'm going to have to assume that it's not. That's that's how you would do it, like statistically, like if you were actually yeah, running a test I, on this if thing. If I assume that it's not a god, I well, it kind of goes back to the fact that it's a zero sum thing. So if I assume it's not a god, then I'd be implicitly assuming it be happened because of secular physical forces, which is equally no valid evidence for it. What's a god so, to you? See, that, like, what's a god to you? Yeah, that's that's another so thing that I have a big question about. Um, that brings me to what Shannon was saying. Right. So you you're saying, well, I it, I would be left to believe that it's up to. And you, I, it's fa fascinating to me that you keep saying secular physics is so. <laughs> like, anyway, yeah. that's besides the point. But you're saying, okay, I need to believe that it was something. I don't like the idea of believing that it was physics or whatever. So I need to believe that it was something else. And then you're ascribing well, that something else to no this nation of God. God. Allow me to finish my sentence one moment, please. And then, the, and then we'll, cause I, cause I think this is where the interesting stuff lies is you're saying I, I, there's more evidence for it being God. Sure. Whatever. For the sake of continuing this conversation, I'll grant that I'm interested in what you mean by God then. So when you say it's God, what does that look like to you? Like, what does that mean? So God. Um, yeah. Now, uh, technically, you believe in it, the so. God, so it, it's the same God that Jews. Yeah. Okay. So you so, think um, it's the, the Christian God. The God but, okay. Yeah. Okay. The so Christian you think it's God, Yahweh. The Christian God is the same as the Jewish and Muslim God. Okay. So yes. you, you believe Allah, everything else God. that follows from that? Like everything else that follows from that. So you think it was um, Yahweh. So if you're talking specifically about the Bible, I believe, okay. So I believe, if you believe specifically about the Bible, um, I believe yeah. that some of the Bible is true and some of it is literary. So I believe specifically, if you're talking about the New Testament, um, I believe um, Jesus was a real person and he is the son of God or he is um, God in a sense, um, just a physical manifestation. Um, and But I do believe that there's certain literary aspects of the Bible that um, were more for teaching lessons or morals that may not be 100% historically accurate, mainly the Exodus and Genesis. So you believe in the most complex theory for the for the beginning of the universe then, because you're multiplying entities here, right? So you yeah. you went all the way back to the beginning of the universe, just said, I don't really think I like the idea of it being whatever secular physics is. So it is God. The God that it is, is in fact Yahweh. And all of this follows from it as well. Like I need to now reconcile thousands of years of inconsistency in history. And my explanation mm -hmm. makes more sense because it's less complicated. Like that um, doesn't make sense I mean, to me. So I don't, mm, so. Everything so that follows from what you about, believe is um, much more complicated. You now have to provide uh, like myriad explanations for myriad things across the course of the entirety of history. You now have to explain in order to reconcile how you think the universe began. I just say, I'm not really so entirely sure because I'm not a physicist, but this explanation seems to make the most sense based on what we know so far. And you're telling me that that explanation isn't better than it was this specific God and all of this shit follows from it too? So first of all, um, has, I don't believe there's ever been a proven theory for the existence of the universe from a secular perspective. So um, there's that. I don't so believe God, any physicists and also Yahweh, like and that. also yeah, Adam and Eve, we'll and also on. some literary we'll devices, and that, also a man rose from the dead. Well, uh, yeah, there's a and, lot. Like, and, that's, like, and, they, and, on, and, one second. 
I, I would love to talk to you about the the actual <laughs> mountains of evidence that we have for things like the Big Bang and how planets form and where life comes from and all these different like we these are not things that we yeah, just kind of decide yeah, believe, just probably okay, so, happened. Let me start. So planets formed, I understand that and accept that evolution has happened. Um, abiogenesis, like these are all proven scientific. I'm, so, I'm talking specifically about the origin of the universe. Right, but like you didn't just say that so, though. That's the yeah. that's the thing that Shannon was driving at is that. You know, we we have mountains of evidence for how the universe got started. We we understand it pretty well. And what you're doing here is saying, no, don't I don't to, like that so evidence. To, I'm Therefore, the so. not only am I okay, going to insert a new idea, a new creator that that did all these things, who also has his own baggage, right? Because if you say there's a god, then also where did that come from, and how does that make sense, and what does outside of the universe mean? And like, there's a there's a million problems with that alone. But not even counting that, so, if you then I say, okay, from the be- from the beginning of the universe where God started it up to humans up to two thousand years ago when Jesus happened and all that stuff happened, which is the stuff you said is real, all that stuff is real too. You've admitted. So you're telling us that. Something, some omnipotent, super powerful being outside of the confines of space and time pooped the universe into existence. And that's where, where the universe started from. Whatever, fine. And then the universe carries on for you know 40, for billions and billions and billions of years. That just things, chaos, randomness, disorder, <laughs> planets forming, stars dying, whatever. On this one planet, there's f- about 4 billion years of life leading up to one particular species of great ape uh, that, that runs around all across the, the, the planet murdering and raping and, and eating and, and dying and disease and famine and all these things. And then 2,000 years ago specifically, your god's like, ah, shit, I should probably get involved now. I should probably do something about this. Like, it's, it's all gone on for far too long. And the only way that I can teach these things morality and tell them how much I love them is by way of a human sacrifice of myself to myself in, in a shitty part of the desert that doesn't, you know, what, whatever. I'm not going to go to the civilizations that can read and do math. I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to just have a horrible ceremony of blood and murder. And that, if they don't get that... I don't know what else to do. I put it, I'll put it in a book and that's the best. Like, there's so many problems with that. Okay. So as opposed to just saying mouth, the universe respond. is what the universe is. And 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 we have evidence for it. Like, how is that any better? Okay, so you put words in my mouth um, consistently and have them let me respond. So um, here's say, you, me Fair. saying that I said, oh, I disregard facts. And, uh, I already conceded evolution, abiogenesis, all the things that can be naturally observed, I've already conceded to you. I never uh, said you disregard you facts. Hit me over the head with that for something? Okay. Well, you earlier you said, yeah, I, never said I don't like that. I never said I like any of them. Um, I think the reason no, that Forrest incorporated all of those is to kind of... Go ahead. So you go, we'll give you some time for a sec, Dallas. Sorry. Okay. So, so in the universe, okay. So there are a couple of positives. Either universe is just a subsection of a larger cosmos and some multiverse, which there's no evidence for, or universe expanded under which case, um, how, did, how exactly would it expand, um, via natural physics, if every, um, whatever action requires an, an action for it. So if the universe would have to expand, someone would have to expand it. Right. And same way, if uh, a rock would have to move, oh. you'd have to throw it. Nope. I so That's we know the works. universe expanded. Sorry. Though. Yeah, we know it's expanding still. We can watch it happening, and we know okay, why. Yeah, we can see the micro the microwave so, radiation. But how did it how did it begin expanding? How how did the Big Bang, which was a rapid expansion, happen? Mm. So what you're mm-hmm. asking are you question. asking me what happened before the Big Bang, or are you asking me why the universe is expanding now? No, why did why did the Big Bang happen? Is my question. You're looking for the so initiating you're me what factor. happened before the Big Bang? Yeah. Okay. So here's the answer. I don't know because you're asking me what happened okay. before time started outside of everywhere. No, nope, we certainly yeah. don't because here's what happens here. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened before time started outside of everywhere because that question makes no sense to me. That that I don't know how to ask that question appropriately. And so I'm conceding the fact that there's, you know, maybe there is something, maybe there's nothing. I'm not sure. 
Like there, I have no idea what that even looks like because the concept, it's like asking me, you know, what does purple taste like? Or, or, you know, what is a 20 sided cube that I, what even is that? I don't know what you're talking about. What you're doing is saying, not only do I know what that is, but I know what's going on there. There's a creature that's doing the things, pulling the levers. And it also has an influence in these other events over here that I also have no evidence for. And it did all these miracles that I have no evidence for. And most of this book that has no evidence is also true, but only the parts that I like and the other parts are literary. Like, you have 50,000 claims here that have no backing all built upon the idea that you don't know what happened before the Big Bang. And I don't either. I just have the guts to say I don't know and end it there. And hopefully someday I well, learn. You, then, I'm not happy with not knowing, if, but I'm not going to make up a bunch of fairy tales to fill in the gaps. So if you don't know, then why is your assumption that it happened because of not God but it happened because of other hypotheses? And again, like I said, it's a zero Because I would first have thumb. to prove that there is a God and then I would have to prove well, that the God are, okay. can do these things, and then I have to prove that the God did do these things. As of right now, well, literally okay. everything Similarly, in the universe has a natural explanation. So why would I make a supernatural explanation for this one special thing? Why wouldn't I assume that the, the law of uniformitarianism, which unites all science, also applies in this instance? Yeah, it seems like you're just saying, so uh -huh, all, if I go back to the beginning of the literal fucking universe, that's the one mm -hmm. place where both you and I can definitively say, I don't know. That's where my God goes. Eat it, you it's, guys. It's just the making, ha, ha, ha. It's the same thing <laughs> as back when we used to say that God, is, God, God controls God. lightning, and then we learn what lightning is. And we used to say that God's cause disease, and then we learn what diseases are. Someday we'll learn about the beginning in the universe, and then your God will disappear from that region too. You're just making your God this little pocket of ignorance that gets smaller and smaller and smaller because we just keep learning stuff. So let me respond to that for one second, please. So if sure. your argument uh, is that whatever, that um, it's, I'm arguing from ignorance or whatever, or that you don't necessarily believe, but the thing is, it's a zero sum hypothesis. So these are, it happened because of secular explanations, be it whatever, whatever physics, um, new scientists could come along and prove it's either because of that or it's because of that. So because it's a zero sum hypothesis, my point is your assumption that in that there's some hypothesis you're going to choose any side and your default is going to be a secular side, then you've already conceded oh, okay. that you're already choosing something with it. I also so, don't I agree, agree with that. <laughs> That's I don't a whole other that. thing okay, so that I don't agree here's, with. Here's the thing. So there's there's something that you're ignoring in the dichotomy that you created there. You're saying you're saying there's a zero sum hypothesis because it's either it either was God or it wasn't God. Right, like that's the that's mm -hmm. the the dichotomy that you're creating. Is it was or it wasn't? Right? Am I understanding that correctly? Let's make sure yeah. I'm understanding you because you felt misunderstood. Okay, so you don't yeah. understand why we're saying it wasn't God. Is that what you're saying? You don't understand why, or you don't yeah. understand why yeah. we why, reject why is that it okay. is. You don't understand why we reject yeah, so that I, it is God. Well, my specifically, okay. I don't know why your default assumption is that it isn't God. My, okay, so I'm going to go back to what I said initially. It's because I don't think a God existing is possible, right? So my position is that it isn't God because I don't think that the existence of God is possible. You would have all of the work to do to define a God that makes sense first, that makes sense okay, at all, do that doesn't have a definition that's internally inconsistent. Everyone that I've heard has had problems, and most of them involve some form of cognition, like God has to have desires, for example. God has to have wants and needs, and most of them, especially in the Christian realm, involve a God who's perfect, right? Who's holy, self-sustaining, and perfect. And it is internally inconsistent and contradictory for a God that is holy, self-sustaining, and perfect to have existed before the universe, outside of the universe, and wanted to create a universe. Because that would mean that that God was not wholly perfect, self-sustaining, and content without the addition of something. That makes that definition internally inconsistent, which is why I don't believe it. You keep trying to shove the Christian God in there, expecting me to accept all of the baggage that comes with it without giving a definition for it, and then wondering why I reject it. So there's the reason why I reject one of them. If you have one that's better, 
Okay. That doesn't have the same sort of inconsistencies. Maybe that, maybe I'll believe that one. But right now, I don't think any of them are plausible or possible. And I don't think that the beginning of the universe not being something that I can explain is a reason to believe in one by default just because I don't have a better explanation. I think that's horrible epistemology and I won't subscribe to it. I think Shannon hit the nail on the head there when she said, I don't believe in one of them. We're atheists just like you're an atheist. We believe in one less God than you do. All the other possible gods out there, all the other creation myths, all the other reasons that people think that the universe might have started, you don't believe in any of them. And I don't believe in yours either. So we're just a little bit more atheist than you are is all. Does that make sense? Oh, he hung up. He dropped after that. He, he went away. So... I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I wanted to get into a few other things with him, I'm but we sorry, haven't I talked about your me. question. I guess <laughs> you answered it real good, though. Uh, man, there was there was a lot there that we could have gone into. That that guy had a million problems that I wanted to tear into, but we just don't have the time. And clearly, he does not have the patience. Um, it's always a so problem when you need to go I'm back looking, to the beginning of time to be like, "That's where God is." He's seriously, right there. See? <laughs> I wanted to ask, like, like, can you? Like, would yeah, you apply that in logic? What corner to? have you been back? <laughs> seriously like that it's it's the i always play this game of just like would you do that with anything else would you use that same logic right. in any other way you know if it, you weren't at the oh, factory where this can of soda came from you don't know where it was made this could have been made by the coke fairy that lives in my garage who makes coca-cola and cocaine and you you can't prove that the coke fairy isn't real because you didn't see this one can get made you know, not sponsored by Coca Cola, uh, but it's just not just like, oh garage. man, this... <laughs> sounds like the See? best place. <laughs> There's fairies oh and cocaine. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> No wonder you're always so fucking happy. Uh, <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and I only became a woodworker for the puns. That's not important. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on our Patreon or as a channel member, and you can actually support specific shows and specific hosts in special tiers on those. Check those options out. Also, you can leave a super thanks and get a little highlighted deal, but if all else fails, you can always like, you can subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, here are some suggestions because I don't care about the algorithm. I am the algorithm. Bye.